Well, the end of the summer 2021 anime season has come and gone, and with it, many of the shows or seasons that had their runs or completed their runs from spring 2021. When you make reviews online, one of the inevitable questions you get asked is, will you review this particular show that aired? It's nice when you have people that are genuinely curious about your thoughts, but the problem is that I watched 20 plus shows this season, if you count continuations. So if I were to make a full length review for everything I saw, I'd not only burn myself out, but they wouldn't even necessarily be the greatest quality. Even if I've seen a show, it doesn't necessarily mean that it'll yield a review. That could be because the show either doesn't give me enough to justify making a full video, or I personally don't feel enough compulsion to make one. Not to mention that some shows I'm watching are still ongoing, and the last thing I'd want is to give less than my best content. As the old expression says, you must pick your battles. So rather than break myself trying to write 20 or more reviews, I'll be taking all the shows that I'm more than positive I won't be making full videos for, and saying a few quick things here, along with the scores I'd give. If something isn't included, it's because I either didn't see it, already plan to make a full review of it, or it's not finished yet at the time of recording. As a result, things like The Aquatope on White Sand will not be featured because it still has several episodes to go, I intend to make videos about Sunny Boy and Life Lessons with Uramichi Onisan, I didn't watch others like The Iratan Deities Know Only Peace, and I already made a video for The Detective is Already Dead, Remake Our Life, and Cheat Pharmacist's Slow Life, Making a Drugstore in Another World. The shows are arranged in alphabetical order by English title, if applicable, and I'll also put timestamps in the video's description if you want to skip to a show you had in mind. With that said, let's begin. Battle Game in 5 Seconds works best by utilizing the variety inherent in its premise. The entire world of the games and Mion as the ringleader allows for several scenarios, and the abilities of the characters can range from boring but practical to awesome but impractical. Akira, the main character, is a bit too much of an uninteresting personality to make him compelling, despite being made out to be a gaming tactical genius, and most of the ensemble cast is not too memorable either, despite getting some backstory. Also, it seems like the animation gets a massive downgrade in the middle of the run, and the bits of CGI stuck out like sore thumbs. That said, there were some halfway decent action scenes, even if the stuff in between wasn't nearly as engaging. I give Battle Game in 5 seconds a 4 out of 10. The case study of Vanitas is a well-animated gothic vampire series with some decent action sequences. Vanitas and Noe's banter with one another is fun, and the ideas of a vampire doctor and the book of Vanitas' magical power are ones that I find interesting. The music is acceptable, if not anything too noteworthy. The problem is that I just largely could not get too invested in the story overall, as I found the comedic moments and interactions better than the plot. The mythology it tries to develop, while good on paper, failed to captivate me, and Vanitas, while certainly having an odd yet magnetic personality, didn't quite win me over as a protagonist. It did end strongly, so maybe I will give the second season a whirl. I liked it more than I thought I would. I give the case study of Vanitas a 7 out of 10. The Duke of Death and His Maid is not doing the possibility of 3D animation any favors, with janky movement and an overall unimpressive aesthetic for its characters that leaves an unpleasant taste. The comedy is far too hit and miss, and though the interplay between the two main characters can be fun at times, I was not too compelled to see their relationship grow or develop further. One of the more recurring jokes in the show, the sexual banter that cannot be capitalized upon, grows old. It's a case of a show that burns through its comedic fuel too quickly and doesn't have enough in the way of characters to support itself. I give The Duke of Death and His Maid a 5 out of 10. Eden Zero, despite its fun science fiction setting, feels like it cannot quite take off. The overall universe it creates and the characters who inhabit it are not particularly interesting, with Shiki and Blue Garden unable to carry the show in a non-hackneyed fashion at the start, and I wasn't drawn enough to the other characters introduced over time. Some of the action scenes were well choreographed, but at 25 episodes, the action and adventure is just not strong enough to sustain the story in the long term. This was a show that just greatly overstayed its welcome, and I will not be surprised if it retreats into the recesses of my memory, never to be dug up again, as it came across as so forgettable. As for whether this is a fairy tale ripoff, I haven't seen that franchise, so I cannot comment on that. It was funny at times, but I don't really feel anything for this show, aside from a shoulder-shrugging disappointment. I give Eden Zero a 4 
out of 10. Girlfriend Girlfriend knows that its two-timing protagonist premise is ridiculous, and embraces it wholesale rather than shying away by hinting at some deeper meaning. This leads to moments of comedy with everyone sharing too many details about a situation, among other things. But the show as a whole is a bit too hit and miss to make it consistently funny. The biggest obstacle in the comedy's way is actually the main character himself, who is not that fun despite being the reason the story plays out the way that it does. The various love interests are vastly more entertaining to see, but only when the show is also not constantly having the voice actors and actresses screaming into the microphone. Nevertheless, I still had fun with it. Look, I need my trash, okay? I give Girlfriend Girlfriend a 6 out of 10. Higurashi no Nakukoro ni Sotsu does a wonderful job of continuing the horrors wrought from the previous season. The animation as a whole still feels a little bit off, but the soundtrack and sound mixing continue to work their unsettling atmosphere. This season keeps the excellent Higurashi tradition of causing you to realize the way you understood a situation was wrong, and there are some moments of shock that help things stay fresh, even if the overall affect isn't quite as strong as prior trips to Hinamizawa, since it relies on the repetitions a little too much. This one is kinda hard to talk about if you haven't seen the previous seasons of Higurashi, so I have to kind of cut it off here. And thank goodness Umineko exists. I give Higurashi no Nakukoro ni Sotsu an 8 out of 10. How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom offers a fun take on the isekai genre, where a lot of its charm is derived not from fantastical magic or battles, though that does happen, but from the fact that the main character is so down to earth. Using economics and the pre-existing laws and customs to save a kingdom managed to work surprisingly well as a concept. The two main characters had some fun chemistry, and the ensemble cast managed to provide a share of both funny and more serious moments. It does take a bit too long for the series to display a genuine source of tension, leaving the middle portion especially a bit starved, and most of the show a bit too static. But the show gave decent entertainment. I don't know if I'll be seeing the second season, but I'll consider it. I give How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom a 6 out of 10. Ms. Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S, freed from the need to establish the universe and its many characters, can finally fire on all cylinders and let its energy really burst forth. With new aspects of the series introduced with Ilulu and a refinement of what made the first season fun, both the comedy and sentimentality were sharper than they were before, in part because scenes felt more well-timed. Toru with the idol worship, nursing Kobayashi, and the candy store part-time job were highlights for me. For being KyoAni's first foray back into making television shows after the 2019 arson attack, it is great that they did so on such a triumph. If there is more of the series coming in the future, I will happily watch. I give Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S a 9 out of 10. Mother of the Goddesses Dormitory is THE trash show of summer 2021. Its attempts to weave pathos and growth for its characters against its highly sexual setting comes across as bizarrely entertaining. It always managed to keep me guessing, finding new ways to keep the inherent absurdity going. This is a show that one watches because they expect it to be cultured trash, and I was so there for it. Complete with an uncensored version, you too can experience cultured anime firsthand. Just make sure that your door is locked, especially since the main character does look like he's younger than he actually is. I give Mother of the Goddesses Dormitory an FBI open up out of 10. Okay, obvious joke aside, I give Mother of the Goddesses Dormitory a 6 out of 10. My Hero Academia Season 5 starts off on the wrong foot with its interclass competition that lasts for far too long. Once it moves beyond that, the season begins to work. Aside from more stuff about Deku's quirk giving him trouble, I like the espionage aspect and the overarching, large-scale threat that faces the heroes. The problem here, though, lies in the sense of entertainment, with the My Villain Academia arc especially not quite affecting me in the way it felt like it should be. The show feels like it's reached a point of stagnancy, and I can only hope it picks up soon. If this new arc doesn't end up panning out to a satisfying conclusion, I think Season 6 could probably be the stop where I get off the bus. I give My Hero Academia Season 5 a 6 out of 10. P. 
Peach Boy Riverside is an uninteresting take on fantasy while trying to weave a prejudicial element between humans, demi-humans, and ogres into the mix. I can only hear Sally ask about what humanity's deal is so many times before it makes me want to pull my hair out. While I have no problem with the order of events being told out of their chronological order, it doesn't succeed well in contributing to intrigue because it leaves the narrative too confused. I'm not even sure putting the episodes in the proper order would have helped matters that much, as regardless, the overall characterization feels weak. The battle sequences are decent with good animation and a little gore, but the story's ideas don't have enough support, especially when presented in this disjunct fashion. It's an average story that's having trouble holding itself together. I give Peach Boy Riverside a 4 out of 10. I'm breaking my own rule with this one, because Scarlet Nexus is a mess, with a plot that seems like it is trying to tackle too many things with not nearly enough time to round them all out, leading to numerous pacing issues. This leads to a lot of potential that gets ruthlessly squandered, with concepts like the psionic powers and governmental surveillance hanging by threads, or red strings if you prefer. Its animation is nothing special, there is so little that is properly conveyed to the viewer, and its attempts at early emotional gut punches miss the mark horribly. Throw in an unengaging soundtrack, backgrounds that sometimes seem like they don't want to exist, and bland characters, there is nothing here that stimulated me. Between this and The World Ends With You, the animation, perhaps studios should rethink their approach to video game anime adaptations. I don't like to give this rating out unless I absolutely deem it necessary, but this show was one of the toughest things I've had to sit through in recent memory. It is only one of five anime seasons that I could not bring myself to finish. Twelve episodes was more than enough. I hated this. I can only pray that the video game is better. There is no doubt in my mind that Scarlet Nexus is the worst show of this season. I give Scarlet Nexus my lowest rating. A 1 out of 10. Spirit Chronicles starts off with a promising idea with its dual memories protagonist, but quickly devolves into a below average isekai with Ryo being ridiculously overpowered and a walking contrivance factory, with so many female characters getting either smitten or attached to him almost immediately, and an overall lack of exciting action. The dual memories idea is never capitalized upon to its potential, and Celia being abandoned early certainly doesn't help. Also, the sexual assault at the end of Episode 7 was absurd and completely unneeded to prove that the culprit was a monster. Even if I tried thinking of this as isekai trash, this one just repelled me. I give Spirit Chronicles a 3 out of 10. And those are my thoughts on everything else that I watched from Summer 2021. I know that there were some that I missed, like Tsukimichi Moonlight Fantasy and Kageki Shoujo, so perhaps I'll see those at a later date. In the meantime, what were some of your thoughts on the Summer 2021 anime season? What were your highlights and what were your lowlights? Did you hate Scarlet Nexus as much as I did? Leave your thoughts below in the comments. In the meantime, this has been Zenote Taku. Happy viewing, everyone!